glass beads are shaken vertically and form a granular gas. A wall divides the container into two compartments. At vigorous shaking, the beads spread out as in any ordinary gas. But when the shaking strength is reduced below a critical level, they cluster together. In every collision, they dissipate energy, slowing each other down, thus clustering into the compartment where the particle mass is already larger. Is the same true for a bidispersed mixture of large and small beads? We prepare an initial state with the majority of large blue beads in the left box and most of the smaller red ones in the right box. At strong shaking, they are distributed uniformly. At moderate shaking, starting from the same initial state, they cluster towards the larger total particle mass, just as expected. This takes 40 seconds. We set up a model, illustrated by this flow diagram, which shows how the contents of the right-hand box evolve in time. For any initial condition in the yellow region, including ours, the right-hand box is emptied. The particles cluster in the left box. But then comes a surprise. When the shaking is reduced even further, the boundary between the yellow and blue regime shifts. The same initial condition now lies in the blue basin of attraction and leads to a cluster in the right box. This is indeed seen in experiment. At this mild shaking, the large beads stay close to the bottom. On top of them, a smaller bead jumps higher than on the plain floor, like a tennis ball on top of a basketball so the small ones preferentially go into the right-hand box. Once they have left, the large beads become more mobile too and follow one by one. After five minutes, the process is complete, in quantitative agreement with the model prediction. In conclusion, by tuning the shaking strength, the clustering can be directed. We can let the large beads win, but also the small ones. The effect is robust enough to work also for candy. You may try it yourself and as a bonus, eat the experiment.